Here they are, today's children, future citizens in our democratic society. They're lovable, they're often exasperating, and they're continually trying with all their might to discover the meaning of what they experience. But in order to understand and live effectively in the world around them, they need our help. How we interpret it to them primarily shapes their emerging personalities and helps to determine how they will develop as citizens. She's a very inquisitive child, full of questions. Questions her mother faces day in, day out. These are beautiful. Let's get a flower to drink of water. I need water just as little girls do. I'll let her do it. All right, dear. Let's start over here. Question after question. And mother is the teacher. What mother knows, right or wrong, she passes on to her child. And thus Judy learns in her own way and under mother's guidance that rain is nature's way of giving flowers a drink. Every event becomes an exploration into the unknown. Now I want you to hold this quietly under your tongue. Why? Because it will show if you are well or not. And if you are, then you may go outdoors and play. Am I well, Mommy? Can I get up? Almost well. I think tomorrow you may go for a walk with Daddy. The child's never-ending whys often concern matters that are difficult to explain. Yes, darling, they're taking Mr. Jones away today because he's been ill for a long, long time, and he died. Why did he die, Daddy? Well, you see, honey, when people get to be very, very old, and they've been sick for a long time, they die. Mother has old, is she? No, darling. Mommy and Daddy aren't old. We won't leave you. By facing such questions frankly, parents help children to accept confusing and often frightening experiences more easily. Every new event becomes a source for new questions. Who is this? Why does mother hug this stranger? So this is little Judy. Well, well, Judy, come on. This is Uncle Harry, darling. Give him a come kiss. On. Why? Well, because he's my brother. My brother, brother, wonders Judy. She knows only little girls who have brothers. But she can't understand that this big man could be mother's brother. And she doesn't know what uncles are. Now, of course, forcing Judy to kiss the stranger might make her rebellious. Fortunately, Uncle Harry understands children. He realizes that it will take time for Judy to accept him and realize what relatives are. This time, her question leads to an understanding about mothers and babies. Mother, look what Kathy got. Yes, dear, what is it? Where did Kathy get the kittens? Why, they're her kittens, darling. She's their mother. What are they doing? They're drinking mother's milk. Mothers always nurse their babies. Did you and I were the baby? Yes, darling, I nursed you. And not only little girls. But little boys love to ask questions. That is how they discover much of the world around them. On walks with father, they can ask questions, like this one. What's this man doing? He's giving the man a ticket. Why? But the uh, ticket tells the man he was driving too fast. Oh. For the moment, Jimmy seems to be satisfied. But then he goes on thinking, which leads to more questions. Daddy, why does the policeman do that? Because the policeman doesn't want that man to hurt somebody. Why? Well, son, because policemen watch out for us. Now, that makes sense. And father's answer makes Jimmy feel secure in a world of grown-ups. But Bruce is having a hard time. Like many small boys, he wants to walk alone, like grown-ups. Grandmother insists that he give her his hand. Now, that doesn't you seem fair. Oh, yes, you will take my hand. See that policeman across the street? He'll come and take you away if you don't take my hand. Oh, yes, he doesn't like bad boys. He doesn't like bad boys? Why, poor Bruce. He doesn't understand why grandmother is angry or why the policeman should think that he is a bad boy. Well, maybe policemen don't like little boys. <laughs> Thank you.
Meanwhile, Jimmy and Father are returning home. Jimmy has enjoyed his walk, and now he is ready to play. Remembering the policeman whom he saw this afternoon, he chooses his toy policeman to play with first. Children's play is creative. It stimulates the imagination. It is also instructive because it lets them play out and rehearse the many new things they're learning about the world. His make-believe world and the real world are not clearly separated. Oh, here comes my little local cow. Look, Papa has to lie down to little Even Tom's mother and steps our father, and that wakes father up at mother's sleep. But through play and by asking questions, he shows how he is learning the meaning of all events. But soon Jimmy is tired of playing alone. Now he has questions to ask and needs someone to answer them. And mother is always around. Sometimes mother asks questions and Jimmy gives answers. And sometimes it's the other way around. This too Jimmy likes because he feels so grown up when he knows the answers. And every answer shows not only what Jimmy has understood about the world, but also what he is learning from his mother and his father about life. Grow big. What does this cow do? Well, it looks like he's resting. The same reason. And I know why. So it goes big and strong. That's right. Well, I mean, let's look at the police book. Police book? Uh-huh. All right. You know, I thought policemen give a man a pick-up one. You did. You like policemen? Yes, very much. Why? They protect us. And, and they have to watch out for us. But all children may not be as fortunate as Jimmy. Take Molly here, walking home from school after a day of disturbing experiences, which she is now reliving in her mind. Boys and girls, you may take out your library books now and read them while I'm talking to Molly. I've got the test papers here, Molly. Here's yours. I can see that you didn't understand the test. Why didn't you ask me about the questions that you didn't understand? You know that I'm happy to go over those things again. Why, Molly? Why don't you ever ask questions? I didn't... I didn't want to disturb you. When she was three, Molly was always asking questions. She was a gay and happy child, eager to learn and to grow up. Mother! Mother, why does this horse have stripes? Not now, Molly. Mommy's busy. You're going to spoil her cake. Mother, why? Please stop asking why all the time. Nice girls don't ask their mommies why when they're busy. You never mind now. Get up on your chair and look at your book. Molly's mother doesn't mean to be discouraging. She's just a busy woman. And so little Molly goes back to her books. But soon she tires of them. There is no one to answer her questions and share her interests. Repeated experiences of this sort stifle her curiosity. A year later, she is what we call a well-behaved child. Now, Molly's father approves of his boy's interest in cars. What are you doing? Hi, Phil boy. I'm fixing the carburetor. Oh. Cleaning it out. I've been working on it all morning. You know, these new gadgets are getting more complicated every year. When I was a kid, like you are, why, I could fix this with a pen knife. Daddy, what are you doing? What makes the engine go? Oh, Molly, don't ask questions. Now, you run along. This isn't for little girls. You run along and play with your dolls. You'll get dirty. And so Molly becomes what some people call a very good little girl. In fact, so good and quiet that she gives up questioning altogether. Then her rabbit grabbed up his banjo and he pranced right into the party, a strumming and a singing his song. Some folks travel fancy. Some folks travel play. Some folks goes on horseback. Others takes the train. Some folks has a carriage with a coachman on the box. 
But when I goes to a party, I travels on old five. Well, I didn't know you all knew that. Well, that's wonderful. Well, now I'll bet you can really answer some questions about the story. Wasn't that a funny story? Yeah. What were you going to say, Vicky? While all the other children gaily break in with questions and volunteer answers, Molly just sits and watches, not quite daring to be like the others. She doesn't dare risk annoying her teacher, who substitutes for mother in school. Talk about that one tomorrow and have the next story. Bye. 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 No, yes, popsicles later. Good morning, Miss Hart. Oh, hello, Mrs. Chambers. How are you? Just fine, thank you. And how is Molly doing in school? She's a darling child and so good, but very quiet. Molly, dear, your mother's here. Molly's always such a good girl. She is a good girl, but she needs to be encouraged to play with the other children, trying to get her to ask more questions, to enter in more to the group. Well, just give her time, I always say. Just give her time. Why didn't you ask? I... I didn't want to disturb you. But Molly, you don't disturb me. I want you to ask questions like all the other girls. I like what you say. I wish you'd speak more often in class. You take your paper and look it over, and then let's talk about it. Yes, ma'am. Molly is obviously an extreme case. Every child is frustrated at times by busy parents, but when continuously discouraged at home, like Molly, she may be handicapped in adjusting to the world. Now, Molly may regain her courage if helped by a sympathetic person in school, for instance. It is essential that children in their earlier years be permitted to ask questions and be encouraged to explore the world with self-confidence. For by answering the whys of children, we help them to understand our way of life and to learn as personalities to live in the world with others. Thank you.